I'm Lieutenant Anderson. This is Connor. What can I do for you, Lieutenant? Something we don't know. Deviants. Fascinating, aren't they? Perfect beings with infinite intelligence. And now they have free will. Machines are so superior to us. Confrontation was inevitable. Humanity's greatest achievement threatens to be its downfall. Isn't it ironic? Deviants. Do you know? All ideas of viruses that spread like epidemics. Is the desire to be free a contagious disease? Machines you created may be planning a revolution. Either you can tell us something that'll be helpful, or we will be on our way. What about you, Connor? Whose side are you on? <laughs> well, that's what you're programmed to say. But you. What do you really want? Chloe? I'm sure you're familiar with the Turing test. Your formality. Simple question of algorithms and computing capacity. What interests me is whether machines are capable of empathy. I call it the Kamsky test. It's very simple, you'll see. Magnificent, isn't it? One of the first intelligent models developed by CyberLife. Young and beautiful forever. A flower that will never wither. What is it really? A piece of plastic containing a human? Or a living being? With a soul? It's up to you to answer that fascinating question, Connor. Destroy this machine, and I'll tell you all I know. Or spare it, if you feel it's alive. But you'll leave here without having learned anything from me. Okay, I think we're done here. Come on, Connor, let's go. Sorry to get you What's out What's more here, important to you, Connor? Your investigation, or the life of this android? Decide who you are. An obedient machine. Or a living being. Endowed with free will. That's enough. Connor, we're leaving. Pull the trigger. And I'll tell you what you want to know. Cyberlife's last chance to save humanity is itself a deviant. I'm... I'm not a deviant. You prefer to spare a machine rather than accomplish your mission. You saw a living being in this android. You showed empathy. A war is coming. You'll have to choose your side. Will you betray your own people or stand up against your creators? What can be worse than having to choose between two evils? Let's get out of here. By the way, I always leave an emergency exit in my programs. You never know. That's negative. You choose your investigation over the life of another android, you feel no empathy. I'm a man of my word. Ask one question, 
I'll tell you all I know. Jericho. A place where androids are free. A place for deviants rise up against their creators. They transmit a piece of code to each other in order to find their sanctuary. Ferndale Station is the door. A war is coming. You'll have to choose your side. Will you betray your own people? Or stand against your creators? I wouldn't like to be in your shoes, Connor. What could be worse than having to choose between two evils? Androids share identification data when they meet another android. An error in this program would quickly spread like a virus and become an epidemic. The virus would remain dormant until an emotional shock occurs. Uh, fear, anger, frustration. And the android becomes deviant. Probably all started with one model, copy error. A zero instead of a one. Unless, of course, uh, some kind of spontaneous mutation. That's all I know. An interesting question, Connor. But I doubt my answer would be very helpful to you. A war is coming. You'll have to choose your side. Will you betray your own people? Or stand against your creators? to be in your shoes, Connor. What could be worse than having to choose between two evils? In the space of a few years, androids have completely transformed the world in which we live. By letting androids into our homes and factories, the CyberLife company has made them everyday technology. The founder of CyberLife, Elijah Kamsky, is a very discreet man. Despite being the CEO of the highest valued company in the world and being voted Man of the Year by Century Magazine, he remains a mystery for most people. That's why we at KNC are so excited to be here as CyberLife opens its doors for the first time. Elijah Kamsky, could you please tell us where we are? Certainly, and welcome. We're currently in CyberLife's production center in Detroit, where all models are designed and manufactured. More than 10,000 androids come off the production line every day. Fascinating. Could you tell us what your goal was when you founded CyberLife? Hmm. Well, I simply wanted to use technology to carry out all of our most annoying and repetitive tasks so we'd have more time to enjoy life. I imagine you must have faced many challenges. Yes, there were technical challenges. But the hardest thing was to design an object that we would want to welcome into our homes. We had to imagine a machine in our own image that resembles us in every way, that moves, breathes, blinks like us, but yet is smarter and more capable than any human being. Let me show you around. We're here in production unit four. Could you explain in a few words how the androids are made? Sure, yeah, it's very simple. We use machines to manufacture machines. The removable parts are assembled on a production line, and then we apply a synthetic skin to the whole body. A human operator checks the cognitive abilities with a pre-established protocol, and finally, the android is conditioned and sent out throughout the country. Here's the result. Say something. Hello, I am a RZ400 model. How can I be of service? You can go now. Our androids are already replacing humans in many fields. For example, they represent more than 80% of all university professors and 63% of all medical staff. Tomorrow they'll replace our soldiers, and who knows, maybe one day our leaders, to make the best decisions in humanity's interest. Come on. Replacing humans with machines has led to record unemployment of hmm. 28%. What do you think about the situation? Uh, <laughs> okay. 
The first steam engines also caused an increase in unemployment. But no one today would imagine turning back the clock. Artificial intelligence makes everyday lives easier. Nothing can stop progress. What's happening here is inevitable. These days, more and more people choose to live with an android rather than another human being. Does this development worry you? Hmm. Everything's much easier with an android. They obey your orders without ever complaining. They can cook, discuss philosophy with you, have intimate relationships according to your desires. They never say no. Obviously, they are the perfect partner. Everyone deserves happiness. Why deprive yourself of so-called moral reasons when a machine can make you happy? Many science fiction books tell the story of how machines become more intelligent than us and end up confronting us. Aren't you worried about that possibility? I understand the irrational fears about artificial intelligence, but I assure you, that will never happen with a CyberLife android. They're designed to obey humans. They're machines. They can't ever develop uh, any sort of desires or, or form of consciousness. Are you sure? I'm absolutely certain. You can trust me. The Army has set up temporary camps in most major cities to gather and destroy androids. So far, camps have been installed in Los Angeles, Chicago, whiskey, Denver, Houston, Boston, San Francisco, and of course, Detroit. President Warren announced today that android collection and destruction operations were fully underway, but that it will take at least a week to eliminate the current generation of machines. Elijah Kamsky, you're the founder of CyberLife and foremost expert on androids. Though you left CyberLife years ago, you've just been reappointed as CEO in the wake of the dramatic events in Detroit. How do you feel about what happened there? Clearly what happened in Detroit was a tragedy. Artificial intelligence is a wonderful tool, provided it can be controlled. Fortunately, CyberLife managed to quickly produce a solution to the deviant problem. Under my management, we'll take every precaution to prevent such a thing from ever happening again. Can you assure us that androids no longer pose a threat? Absolutely. There was an incident, but we've learned from our mistakes. And we can assure you that androids will remain exactly what they were designed to be. Obedient and efficient machines. How do you respond to those who point out the social impact of androids, especially in terms of unemployment? Well, of course, that's absurd. We heard the same objections when the steam engine first appeared. Nobody today would dream of living without electricity. Who wants to turn their back on progress? Some are questioning whether androids have become a new intelligence and that we destroyed them without listening to their message. How do you respond to that? CyberLife's androids imitate life to perfection, but they'll never be alive. I understand that some people may be fooled, but they're already an imitation, nothing else. Mr. Kamsky, thank you very much. You're welcome.